So let's start. Let's talk about you. So why are you here? Why are you start, still talking about the message of breast cancer? Well, I think probably you can relate to the fact that once you get diagnosed, you become dubiously kind of a spokesperson. For me, I had a huge fan base made up of predominantly women. And I felt like I had this really strong message, one of which was early detection. And early detection comes about with being diligent about mammograms, knowing your family history, and the training of your breast. Um, but, you know, the other message being until we have a cure, early detection is um, our greatest hope. So that really became part of my, you know, part of who I am and part of my drive and part of my give back as well. How are you doing? How are you feeling? If people just want to know, yeah. you're okay? And I'm great. I'm, gosh, eight years out. And um, like I said, I was, very, I was very lucky that it was detected so early. So I avoided chemo, but um, yeah, still out doing the work. Oh, you didn't have to do chemo. Oh, no. that's great. So it was a very small tumor then. Yeah, it was. So self-exams, too, is mm -hmm. a really huge thing. Did you detect it with your self-exam? No, I, uh, my cancer was diagnosed from just a routine mammogram. And they found something that looked odd, and they said, come back in six months. And my OB called and said, don't wait six months. And that's probably one of the reasons I didn't have to have chemo. So, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. What do you remember? I mean, I know having been, you know, diagnosed myself, there are just certain things that I really remember that were kind of moments um, where you, you just realize you've got, you know, you've got cancer, and you've got to really work at this, and you mm -hmm. need other people around you. Mm -hmm. That was, for me, what I learned, is that you mm -hmm. can't do this by yourself. What did you learn or get from this person? Yeah, well, invariably, I'll walk through an airport or into Starbucks, and someone will come up to me and say, I'm a breast cancer survivor. It's a very, very visible community of women who find each other, and almost all of them will attest to the fact that there was a tailor-made lesson for them. And for me, um, I realized pretty early through the process of doing radiation that the only person that could go through radiation was me. That my exercise of putting everybody above myself and putting myself at the bottom of the list was not going to work for me anymore. And I think learning to say no and learning really to listen to myself and put my needs first was a huge challenge for me. And that really was my, my lesson through cancer was that um, if you continue to take care of everybody else before yourself, you'll get sick, you know? That's the cold, hard reality. So coming here, what is it like to, to be doing this for Back in the Swing and, and, and you know, the people it's, that are excited about you being here? Well, it's great. I, I love the idea of Back in the Swing because um, being a survivor, um, I, I shared with Barb, you know, you know, I have a uh, meningioma, which is nothing to worry about. But one of the things I found out about having a brain tumor is that it can be breast cancer related. It can be um, uh, the result of uh, estrogen. Um, or lack of estrogen, and a lot of women have them. And there are things that they just don't tell you that you might um, be braced for, you might be able to expect, or you might look out for just along the way in your recovery as well as your survivorship. Um, and I love the idea that this organization is um, a resource for women um, in their, their going about getting on with their lives. Because it is jarring. Your life never, ever looks the same after you're diagnosed and after you've gone through treatment and after you've beat cancer. Nothing is ever going to be the same. Um, all the things that you did before that you thought worked for you no longer maybe are important or don't work. And it's, it, it, it sheds a new light on your life. And there are certain things that I think that doctors don't tell you um, that's part of the assumption of survivorship. And it's a wonderful thing to have a resource to go to. and people who can answer questions and define fellowship and survivorship and um, that takes take some of the sting out of getting back into life. Do you still, do you work out? Do you, you mm -hmm. know, when you were getting back, well, it's eight years now, so yeah. I'm sure, but... I was, was always healthy. I always worked out before. I worked out through, through my treatment, worked out afterwards. Um, ate, you know, I ate okay. I definitely changed the way I ate. Uh, during my treatment and then from that point on just because there's so much knowledge that um, can be benefited from through food and the, the benefits of food and wellness, um, general wellness overall and well-being um, that has so much to do with our nutrition and that is one way at least to be proactive in your own recovery. Sound like you have a positive message for everybody. 
Well, you know, life is about, you know, beating cancer is definitely a positive message. I, I, I would hate to um, have, have it gone a different way. And for me, every day is a celebration. And that's the way I look at it, and that's the way I feel that we as survivors, um, we have to live knowing that we've gone, you know, we've gone through this, this passage and, and we can help each other on the other side of it.